This is Robo Sapien. He was introduced in the year of 2004 from the toy company Wowie Robotics. Hi, how are you doing? What's yeah. that? You mean those? Yeah. They're Robo Sapiens, the most intelligent of humanoid robots. Oh. Hey, yeah. hey, it looks great. Let me try. Hey, Robo yeah. Sapien, four uh. different modes. 67 programmable yeah. functions. Watch it! Uh, Robo Sapien does things you people have never seen before. And from the moment he hit store shelves, he was an instant sensation. And that's because he was the most advanced robotic toy by a long shot when he was introduced, having seven axes of movement and a full bipedal walking system. He doesn't even have wheels on his feet, he just genuinely walks. The robot had 67 functionalities and could pick objects up off of the floor. He could throw objects, charge at things, and scream, but here's the thing about Robo Sapien. He was always remarkably simple. He's built off of an 8-bit microcontroller that has 16 kilobytes of RAM, so to say the least, he's limited in functionality. He has no form of rotary encoding for any of his joints, the only thing that he has is a bipedal walking gait system and tiny little switches inside of his arms and shoulders that tell them when they're in their center position. The robot uses seven standard DC motors with filtering capacitors, so it's basically just a bunch of motors in a box designed to look humanoid. And that brings us to the person who created Robo Sapien. Mark Tilden of Los Alamos Biomechanics Engineering Laboratory from NASA. Basically, he designed a bunch of robots based on what's called beam robotics, which basically means no programming, it's all circuitry, but we don't need to get into that. Basically, Biomechanics means that he's really good at designing things that are based off of, you know, real biomechanical structures that you'll find inside of muscles and such. For instance, Robo Sapien is packed full of springs. This guy ran at 40 megahertz and had 16 kilobytes of RAM. You see, Mark Tilden actually designed Robo Sapien to be modified, and here's the telltale factor. As you can see by the design of Robo Sapien, there is a lot of empty space inside of his chassis, and that's entirely intentional. There were entire books like the Robo Sapien Hacking Companion that I had as a kid that were dedicated to hacking these robots. But there's one reoccurring thing you'll find with all these robot hacks. As you can see, Oftentimes, the robot is controlled by an external server that controls the robot itself through an IR interface, or somebody put an Arduino right up to the robot's motherboard and controlled it through its IR interface, or they just removed the microcontroller on the original board and controlled all of those original signals through an Arduino, which means that you're still limited to what the Robo Sapien could originally do. Sure, maybe maintaining the original Robo Sapien board has its own benefits, but as you can see, most of the time that results in a backpack or some sort of ugly solution that doesn't look that great. What if someone went into a Robo Sapien and took out the original board, replaced every single motor controller with an off the shelf component, put a Raspberry Pi 02W inside of him, as well as a Google Coral Edge TPU, and a 160 degree 5 megapixel camera in his chest, and basically put the guy on steroids? That is exactly what the Pi Sapien is. So to start using the robot, all you need to do is unplug him from his charger. And then you put the robot wherever you want to, and then you turn him on through the power switch on the back. The robot displays a health and safety warning and does some battery training.
you've got the battery percentage in the top right corner and the Wi-Fi signal in the top left corner, if you have icons enabled, that is. And just taking a basic look around this robot, you can see there's no backpack to be found anywhere. Everything is just inside of the robot. He's got charging plates on his feet for his autonomous charging dock, as well as a barrel jack for 5 volt charging. And he does some idle animations every now and then. Now since the robot is just idling, if we decide to hold down both of the claw triggers, he'll spawn the menu. And as you can see, you go through the menu by using these as buttons that take you through different options. And this is like select or cancel or anything like that because you can see these represent the foot triggers and these represent the hand triggers. So we've got all sorts of options inside of the robot's menu like running programs, setting up the audio, configuring the robot, plugging it into my home automation system, the battery settings, updating the robot, shutting down the robot, the robot demos, and you're back around to programs. So let me show you what's cool about the programs folder. If we go into the robot directory by VNCing into the robot's computer, we can go to the My Programs folder, and as you can see, we have Program 1 and Test. There's a program called Main.py inside of it. And as you can see here, this will make the robot display some text. But inside of this other program, you can find the other system only uses one definition, and that's because the robot's firmware will dynamically execute this as if it was part of the main loop that's already running. So basically, if you have a function called dance3 inside of the robot's code, you can call it from any program that you write for it. This works for servo and motor control as well, so that's very convenient. So you can write your little programs for your robot and go ahead and run them. Let's try to intentionally feed the robot a bad program. So we'll go into the main programs folder and then mess with this one and goof it up a little bit and then save that. Now if we go to run that program, the robot has crashed. Now this is really useful because people can build a PySapien and then learn how to do a bunch of things in Python or learn how to do robotics or automation or AI or anything along those lines. He's essentially a really cheap STEM education kit. PySapien offers more than just a simple robotic toy. He's an entire educational kit loaded with tons of features that make it convenient to manipulate the robot in every way that you want. You can not only write your own programs for the robot, but you can also write your own personalities. So if we go into the config menu, you'll find web API control, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, robot name, and then robot personality. If we launch robot personality, you'll find your robot personalities folder. And here we are, and I only have RoboSapien V1 on this robot, but for the most part, it's a working system. Let me go ahead and show you what happens if you pull the personality that you're using out of the My Personalities folder, where you don't have any personalities to begin with. We still get a standard battery post, but then the robot starts doing this. The robot will then pick its head up and show you a QR code that you can scan. You scan that QR code on any device, and all of a sudden, you're on a website that tells you how to set up your PySapien. There's also an entire personality store where you can get whatever you want for the robot and then upload it. And then once you have the personality that you want, you just go ahead and drag it into the My Personalities folder, and there you are. And to show you how a personality works, you have the loadin.py, and that is all of the sound files and bitmaps that you'll need for your animations. So this is all I needed for RoboSapien V1, he's kind of simple. And we close that down, we can go to anim.py, and anim is what holds all of the animation sequences. As you can see, we've got Demo, we've got Wake Up Path, we've got Anxious Foot, Kinda Sway, then you've got Do Fart, Do Burp, Do Wave, Do High Five, Do Roar, and you may notice that none of the things like Throw and whatnot are in here, and that's because it's built into the robot's firmware locally, so the kinetics can't get messed up. Unless you put something like that in anim.py, then it'll just redefine it and use the new throw, so you can give him goofy throws or goofy walks or whatever you want. Now if we restart the robot's firmware, he's back to normal. But you can also download something else from that QR code, and that 
is PySapien Control. Now I am going to do a PySapien build guide in the future, but unfortunately this one is a prototype and I was learning as I went, so he's not really worth taking apart or, you know, all the footage I got of building him is also completely unintelligible, so there's that. However, in the video description, there is an Amazon list for everything that I use to build the robot, so if you want to do it, you can go ahead and try. I've also listed the firmware for the robot that you need to download and flash onto an SD card and configure your Wi-Fi network and put the PySapien stuff on him, but after all of that, he should just work. But here's another thing that you can download in the description of this video. The PySapien control application. It searches for the robot, and then it finds it. Now, of course, this is a little buggy right now, but you can control the robot through this application. So I think there's about 120 functions built into this application. Not all of them work yet, but I am working on implementing them. So as for the things that work, you've got a flip button up here that, you know, you can control the robot from the rear or the front and have it still make sense. Just to demonstrate the flip button, as you can see, it's controlling that side of him, and then we flip him, and now it's controlling the right side of him, so. It looks normal. And this would look normal if the robot was in the other orientation. In this mode, you can control the shoulders, the wrists, the claws, the feet, the tilt of the robot, and you can also make the robot move around. Like, this is the run mode, where Robo Sapien goes a good bit faster. Or, you can just do the normal walking mode, where the robot kind of walks around. You've got a turning function for the robot. As you can see, he's pretty good at turning, too. I actually went through the trouble of giving him servos inside of his claws, so now he has fully actuated hands and arms and all that good stuff. So we can move his wrist out, and then open his hand, close his hand, move it, do whatever we want with the Robo Sapien, you know? just full control. This is the green menu where you can do things like grab, throw, reset the position of the arms, and do the programming. And by programming I mean like what the original toy did. So you can program a button on the remote as a sequence, or you could program a sequence to play whenever one of his triggers comes into contact with something. Except now you'll be able to save it directly into the robot. Now of course we can grab an object. There you go. And we can throw the object. He also has a low grab function now, where he can grab things that are directly off of the ground. This is the say button, I quite enjoy it. This is the say button, I quite enjoy it. You've also got wave in this menu. Dance 3. I don't know what went wrong with this mp3 file for the original Robo Sapien dance, but it's something. However, we can play Demo 1. He's still great at karate. He can still give a high five. Hey. Now would you believe this? The original robot had a burp button, but not a fart button. But that wasn't going to stop me. I'm loving this. You can also make the robot do expressions like nod, shake, confused, blink, which is kind of broken on some of them, but you know, that's besides the point. You've got happy, sad, 
Mad, Cuckoo, which is my personal favorite, Glare, Surprised, Alert, Tired, which is my second favorite. The application also has a gyroscopic walking function, but unfortunately this phone doesn't support it. So this was going to control the head and eyes, so you have absolute position. So you could be like, you're looking right, you're not, you're looking left, you're not, or you're doing like control head or control eyes. If you're doing control head, you're looking left, then you're not looking in any direction, you're looking up. Or you can do relative position and then it kind of like holds the position so you can step the motors or the eyes in whatever direction you want. So everything's still pretty early and I haven't programmed a lot of the functions on the remote. I mean, RoboSapien has a lot of functions. However, all of the robot is there and it's ready to be programmed and it's almost done. But that's not even half of what this app can do. You see, the true power of this application lies within the Cybrix terminal. And if we go into Robot Terminal, as you can see down here, it'll launch Cybrix. Now, what is Cybrix? Well, Cybrix is a little terminal language that allows for you to interface with the robot. That way you can use a computer to control the robot and get real-time feedback, or you could do basically anything you want with it. So entering help will give you a list of things that you can enter to use the terminal. So I'm going to go ahead and try ls cybrix. And as you can see, inside of cybrix we've got commands like ls, kinetic, command-arguments, command-continued updates, c, do, express, like right here I can go ahead and list the kinetic systems and as you can see it says available are 11 axes of movement. Yeah, it's right about all of that. And if we enter kinetic motor arguments, we'll get all of the arguments for controlling the motor, which includes part, direction, duration, and force. And then you get a little example command down there. So this robot is the real deal. It's got everything you need to control it. And then some, for good measure. And here's what shutting down the robot from the remote would look like. It is now safe to shut down your robot. Good night, Pisapian. Now, as for AI on the robot, I'm currently working on object tracking and room navigation. So as you can see, if we get in front of the robot, he begins to track us. Or if we put a cup on the floor in front of him, he might notice that. There he goes. Now he's looking at it. I could show the robot the TV and then he's looking at it, bring him back to me. And now he's looking at me, bring him back to the TV. Now he's looking at it and then bring him back to me. And now he's looking at me. This is what the robot sees. As you can see, you can identify objects and choose what to look at. And we can turn him this way, or wherever we want to, and he'll start to track things. As for navigating the room, he'll just use a hybrid of object tracking and edge detection for the floor. But he's actually watching me right now and he's actively responding to my motion. Now here's the kicker, unlike all these previous RoboSapien projects, everything's processed locally inside of the robot, so he works wherever you put him. I mean, look at this, he's head tracking in the middle of the freaking woods. But yeah, PySapien's basically just a Raspberry Pi powered robot kit that's actually a RoboSapien. Now if you want to look into this robot or read more on it, you can look in the description of this video where you can find all the downloads, the firmware, the setup process, and the hardware that you'll need to build him. Now of course, there is no official build guide yet, but he is straightforward enough to reproduce. If you want to see the process that I went through to build the robot, you can browse my YouTube shorts because I uploaded this guy in tiny little bite-sized chunks while working on him. But yeah, that's PySapien, dare I say the best hacked RoboSapien in all of history. And you can build them yourself, and maybe in the future I'll offer robot commissions where you can order them and I'll ship them. But yeah, thanks for looking at this video, and that's all I have to say about him today. Peace.